Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Man United must sell Paul Pogba to buy in January. Now Paul Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Before the start of the season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. I hope Paul Pogba ends up signing a new Man United contract because he is a good player. He's enjoyed a good start to the Premier League season. Paul Pogba already has seven assists. He produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season. At one point last season though, he had a thigh injury and he was out for a while and he sustained a couple of ankle injuries at Man United. Now a few weeks ago, Paul Pogba's agent Mino Riola suggested that Pogba could return to Juventus from Man United on a free next summer because Mino Riola did mention that Turin is still in Paul Pogba's heart. Well, Pogba did enjoy four good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. He said the other week, though, that Juventus have no plans to re-sign Pogba next summer. Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with Pogba. Um, a couple of years ago, Pogba spoke about Real Madrid and his relationship with Zidane. And he said he was seeking for a new challenge. Barcelona have been in for Pogba. And earlier on this season, he said PSG are pushing to sign Pogba next summer. He said Pogba's set to join PSG on a free. PSG wanted Pogba in this year's summer transfer window, but they couldn't get him because they got Lionel Messi. So he's had a long-running transfer saga. A few weeks ago, Paul Pogba's brother, Mafia's Pogba, came out and said that Paul Pogba is yet to decide on his future and his contract situation is up in the air. Paul Pogba's agent, Mino Riola, has done a lot of talking. He made an announcement back in December last year saying that Pogba's career at Man United was over. He was unhappy and he had to leave and he had no intentions of extending his contract. Solskjaer was furious with Mino Riola's announcement. Now this season is Pogba's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far and we paid £89 million for him. So reflecting on that, he's our most expensive sign at the moment. We had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Man United are going to sell quite a few players next year. Um, I'm expecting us to sell Anthony Martial. Uh, Martial is not good enough to represent the club. Martial is definitely finished at Manchester United. Martial played against West Ham in the Carabao Cup, struggled to make an impact. A couple of chances fell to him, but his finishing was poor. And for the vast majority of the game against West Ham in the Cup, he looked isolated. Well, he said the other week that Man United are ready to sell Anthony Martial in January and are ready to accept offers of £40 million. Barcelona are considering making a move for him next year. Martial's been a long-term target for Tottenham. It did mention that Martial is open to joining another Premier League club and Atletico Madrid were linked with him last summer. Don't forget Martial rejected the chance to join Lyon on loan on deadline day in the summer transfer window. 
Martial has been at Man United for like six years. He's got three years left on his contract. Martial has scored 78 goals in 264 appearances for Man United in all competitions. And we got Martial in a deal worth 58 million from Monaco back in 2015. Last season, Martial was out of an injury for a while. Don't forget Solskjaer was the one that gave Martial that number nine shirt. Uh, Donny van der Beek, there's a good chance we'll offload him in January because Donny van der Beek is not getting enough game time at Man United. And I've said, you know, Solskjaer needs to start Donny van der Beek in the Premier League. Van der Beek played no part against Villa. Um, he played the full 90 minutes against West Ham in the Cowboy Cup last week and he put a very good performance out. He also... Started against Young Boys, but Solskjaer taking him off at half-time in that game. And I criticised Solskjaer for that because Van der Beek was our best player in the first half of that game. Don't forget Solskjaer rejected Van der Beek's exit because Everton were close to signing him on loan. Many clubs have been in for him. Not so long ago, Don Hutchinson... The former Liverpool and Everton midfielder told Donny van der Beek that he must leave Man United to save his career. And the other week, Paulins said that Donny van der Beek has absolutely no chance of staying at Man United. Uh, but I haven't really had much of a perception on van der Beek at Man United, but in general he's a good player. This season is his second full season at Man United. We got him in a deal worth £40 million for my axe. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025 and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Lingard, good chance we're going to offload him in January. Obviously, Lingard played no part against Aston Villa in the league last weekend, but obviously played against West Ham in the Carabao Cup. Put a pretty decent performance out, you know, had some good chances. Uh, should have won a penalty as well because he got brought down by Mark Noble. It was greedy in that game, though. Uh, Lingard obviously came off the bench and scored the winning goal against West Ham in the league, and what a goal that was from Lingard. Prior to that game against West Ham in the league Solskjaer said that Lingard will be a Man United player next season because he mentioned that he's read through and through Man United are looking to extend Jesse Lingard's contracts Lingard's current contracts at Man United expires next year the other week Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer over playing time concerns despite him being in the last year of his deal earlier on this season Solskjaer did confirm that Lingard remains part of his plans Diego Dalot, uh, there's a good chance we'll offload him next year. Diego Dalot is our second choice right back. Obviously, Dalot's in contention to play tonight against Villarreal because obviously Anwan Pesaka is unavailable because he's suspended. Pesaka got sent off in our 2 1 defeat to Young Boys for stamping on Martins. The lot obviously played against West Ham in the Cowboy Cup and he put a very good performance out. Uh, last season, the lot had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that again, some experience. We got the lot three years ago from Porto. We paid £19 million for him. He's got a contract with Man United till 2023. Jones, good chance we'll offload him next year. Uh, Jones has always been inconsistent, plus he doesn't get in R11. Jones was out with an injury for a while, but obviously he's back. Jones was part of the squad for the game against West Ham in the Cup last week, but obviously played no part. When the summer transfer window was open, it said Jones is set to stay at Man United this season after Solskjaer told him he remains part of his plans. 
this season is Jones' 11th season at Man United, being long serving. He's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era. Eric Bay could offload him as well in January. And Alex Tellez, um, he's another player we'll, I think we'll offload in January because Tellez doesn't really get into our team. Obviously, the reason we brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. But since we got Tellez in, we've got the best out of Luke Shaw. Uh, Tellez came back from injury not so long ago. We got Tellez for £15.4 from Porto. And could Edison Cavani leave in January? I think Barcelona are going to reignite their interest in January because on deadline day in the summer transfer window, it said Barcelona uh, made an inquiry over signing Edison Cavani. But Romano came out and said that Cavani would not leave and he was happy to obviously stay at Man United. I can't say I want Cavani to leave though because he's made an impact since he's come in. Obviously, back in May, Cavani signed a one-year contract extension and he receives over £200,000 a week. Cavani came back from injury not so long ago. And Mata, I think he'll also leave next year. Now, as you all know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is under pressure because we've lost three of our last four games in all competitions and we've lost two home games in a row and we've failed to score a goal in our last two home games. You know, these United fans that are demanding Ole out. I presume there's still United fans that are rolling in and believe he does need more time. But Solskjaer's job is safe at the moment. Because the Man United board retain full support for Solskjaer. Uh, Solskjaer got very good backing in the summer transfer window. John Murtough backed him, Darren Fletcher backed him, and the Glazers backed him, but only because they'd been persuaded to. Solskjaer has to win a trophy this season. He's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager. We haven't won a trophy since 2017. And the other week, Solskjaer did say we must leave a legacy of silverware. Solskjaer's ambition for this season is to win the Premier League. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013. That's eight years ago now. And we should be winning the Premier League this season because we've got a title-winning squad. We've got like the third most expensive squad in world football. I think the squad's worth around eight hundred and five million. Well, earlier on this season, Solskjaer told his Man United squad that he's better than the nineteen ninety nine treble winning team that Ole was part of. Obviously, there is some Man United fans that have been demanding Antonio Conte in to replace Solskjaer. Obviously, there's been some Man United fans demanding Zidane in. But Solskjaer is going to be staying at Man United for at least this season. You know, like I said, this season is his third full season. I did say at the start of this season that you know, this season's going to be absolutely massive for Solskjaer because he's got big expectations to exceed. Obviously, in the summer, Solskjaer signed a new contract with the club until 2024. There's an option of a further year. And we made a mistake giving Solskjaer that new contract because I can assure you won't see it out. But whatever happens regarding Solskjaer, I'll always adore him because... At the end of the day, he's a club legend. He endured 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. And Solskjaer's most iconic moment as a player was when he scored 
the winning goal in the Champions League final back in 1999. You know, when he won the club the treble, and that is the club's greatest achievement. Reflecting now on Solskjaer's being Man United manager, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite a bit on the job. But there's still plenty of things Solskjaer's got to learn because he's still a young coach. Obviously, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He enjoyed two spells at Mould, but they're not a big club. He won a few Norwegian titles and that with them. And before then, he was at Cardiff and his record at Cardiff was terrible. And before then, he managed a Man United reserve team for a couple of years, so he watched some of the team grow and develop. Ole has not got a proven pedigree as a manager, and that is definitely a concern. In December, Solskjaer would have been in charge of Man United for three years. You know, Solskjaer got appointed in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He's been permanent Manchester United manager since March 2019. Uh, Solskjaer has made good signings as Manchester United manager. You know, Solskjaer has signed 14 players. Uh, we spent like £441 million so far under the Solskjaer era. So in the summer of 2019, Oli recommended Daniel James and wan and Harry Maguire in. In January 2020... He recommended Bruno Fernandes in and Odina Gala win on loan. In the summer of 2020, he recommended Edison Cavani in Donny van der Beek, Alex Tellez and Mad Diallo and Fecundo Palistri. And in this year's summer transfer window, he recommended Tommy in, in Jadon Sancho, Rafael Varane and we re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years. In this year's summer transfer window, we spent around £141 million. Uh, Solskjaer's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in. You know, he's got rid of players permanently. He's also loaned quite a few players out. The players he's got rid of permanently, obviously, he offloaded Daniel James in this year's summer transfer window. Um, Solskjaer released Sergio Romero and Joe Pereira. Uh, back in January, Oli offloaded Igalo, Fossa Mensa, and Marcus Rojo. Solskjaer's let players like Young leave, Valencia leave, Damian leave, Smalling leave. He let Fellaini go back in January 2019. He also let Herrera go, Angel Gomez, San Se Sanchez and Romelu Lukaku. So there, a lot of the players got rid of permanently. Um, in the summer transfer window, Oli loaned out Ethan Laird, Axel Tuanzebe, Andres Pereira, Brandon Williams, Tahif Chon, and Facundo Palistri. Um, I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth as well. You know, seems to have a lot of trustworthy in his young players. Solskjaer has more or less given everybody their chances to express themselves, including the young players, like he surely would do when he got appointed in as Man United manager. You can say... Solskjaer has made progress as well because obviously he's got us to semi-finals, got us to the Europa League final last season. That was his first major final as Man United manager and also got us to the FA Cup quarter-final. In Solskjaer's first full season, got us a third-place finish and in his second full season, got us a second-place finish. So what Solskjaer produced in his first full season and his second full season, he's looking to build on that you know, this season. You know, Solskjaer has managed over 150 games as Man United manager in all competitions. You know, despite me criticising Solskjaer a lot during his managerial tenure at Man United, you know, I still think he's our best manager since Ferguson. Obviously, Oli 
isn't going to replicate what Ferguson did as Man United manager. No manager is going to replicate what Ferguson did, not in my lifetime anyway. Obviously, Ferguson endured a 27-year tenure at Man United. He won 30-odd trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. So, reflecting on that, he brought success to the club, but... Fergie didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Man United. So that just indicates he'd take some manager's time to settle in. But we haven't been the same team since Ferguson retired. And a lot of United fans predicted it was all going to go wrong when he retired. Obviously, we've sat three managers since Ferguson retired. We sat Moyes after 10 months. We sat Louis Van Gaal after two years. Despite him winning the FA Cup and we sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Despite him winning the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield in his first season. Mourinho also got us a second place finish in his first season. So you can say he did enjoy one good season at Man United. So Ole is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. Now I'm hoping... Manchester United can sign a midfielder in January or next summer. Now, obviously, you know the news on Declan Rice. Uh, Solskjaer has told the Glazers he wants Man United to sign Declan Rice. Now, it's said not so long ago that we abandoned our pursuit of Declan Rice over West Ham's 90 million valuation. It says we're looking at Declan Rice alternatives. Now, obviously, earlier on this season, it said Man United identify Declan Rice as number one midfield transfer target for next summer. It says Declan Rice is likely to leave West Ham next summer as he targets a club offering Champions League football. But when the summer transfer window was open, it said Declan Rice was unhappy with West Ham's 100 million price tag. He's rejected a few contract offers at West Ham. Rice has got three years left on his contract at West Ham. Rice is predominantly a holding midfielder, but he can be deployed as a centre half. He's been at West Ham now for like seven and a half years, so he has remained loyal to them for so long. There was narratives coming out yesterday saying that Manchester United were interested in Calvin Phillips from Leeds. And Leeds value him at 60 million, but you know, we won't be getting Calvin Phillips. You know, Calvin Phillips has already made it clear that he's not willing to come to Manchester United. So, there you go. And um, on my last video, um, I spoke with you about McTominay and Fred. Uh, Solskjaer trusts McTominay and Fred in Man United's midfield. Uh, like I mentioned to you, there's been Man United fans having a go at Solskjaer. With him persistently selecting McTominay and Fred. Because they are both liabilities. But like I've said, in regards to Solskjaer, you know, it's time for Solskjaer. To prove himself to be an, an elite manager. So anyway right, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.